Hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking, and um, this is quite a special video, just to say, because the 29th of March 2022 marks a reasonably special day. That is Wayton, Smith and Hockard Day of 2022, the 29th of March 2022, in, in, honor, in, special, in a special honorary of the, the late Robert Grant Pitswayton, Alf Smith and Joan Hockard. All of all three of which were born on this on no 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 all three of which were born on the twenty ninth of March nineteen hundred and eight and the twenty ninth of March twenty twenty two is a hundred and fourteen years later. I mean, very, sadly, they are no longer with us now. All three of them have sadly died. They have now sadly since died, but all of them live to be a very old age. Both, all three of which, Robert Waite and Alf Smith and Joan Hockard, the three of them lived to be over the age of a hundred, to spoil it slightly, but not spoil it too much. The late Robert Grant Pitswayton, who was born to a large family in um, Hull in Yorkshire <coughs> being born to Arthur Wayton and Eliza Wayton nay Pitts and all that he was in a he was the fourth of seven children and all of uh, and um, all four and four of his siblings, including him, died past the age of eighty, but one sad of his siblings sadly died as a young lady, one of his sisters, she died what was worse before his parents, which was a very, very sad time in which in which Robert Wayton himself in which Wayton himself really suffered for that, as he was only a very young man when his one of his older siblings died, and when he, and plus his parents, not to mention, were still alive at that point, which was worse, in as a in a bad scenario, and um, and another one of his um, older siblings only died when she was in her early sixties, back in the nineteen sixties. But. But on quite some good news. All of his brothers lived, died, lived to be 80 plus. I mean, it was sad when they died, but they lived past the age of 80. And, um, and also one of his siblings, despite only two of, two of his um, three sisters not living to be um, 80, one of them lived to be almost 86. And then his brothers, uh, I think it was... Um, David Wayton, who lived to be just one month shy of his 83rd birthday, we died before his 83rd, and then, um, and then the youngest one, Donald, um, that's the youngest of all, lived, died shortly before his 87th, Margaret died before her 86th, his sister, and his brother Arthur died, very sadly he died, but died just two months shy of his 96th birthday. And after Arthur died in 2002, aged 95, nearly 96, that left Robert Wayton as the last standing sibling. And he was the last one standing until his own death, which I will say a little bit more later on. So he came from a family of a reasonable amount of longevity, despite only two of his siblings not living past the age of 80, but the rest of them did. And, um, and, um, and in, in a way, um, he led quite a big and interesting life. Doing, living through many things in school, and he stayed in school. He was meant to leave school at fourteen in 1922, but he, but he stayed on until he was sixteen, in which his father paid, paid for him to stay until he was sixteen, three pound a term, 
which was quite expen very expensive back in the 1920s, it, which enabled him to take up a marine engineering apprenticeship, which he did from 1922 until he got qualified in 1925. But once he was qualified in 1925, it was a terrible state for the United Kingdom. The shipping industry had closed down and it was just a tragic, tragic, an employment of tragedy really, lacking employment, an absolute tragedy in that time. So he was pretty much out of work for a long time and then in 1933 he went to um, Taiwan to teach marine engineering at a missionary school in Taiwan but had to spend two years, before he could teach in Taiwan, he had to spend two years in Japan learning the language, in which he did. And then whilst he was in Japan, he met his future wife, then Agnes Kenva. But then she went off to Ghana, I think, to teach there, and And uh, Robert Wright and himself um, taught in the missionary school subsequently. And then they used to write to each other, but sometimes it, it took about six weeks for his letters to get to his then future wife. Sorry. And um, so they kept in touch despite being apart, but then eventually they got together. And then eventually they got married in Hong Kong in 1937. And then one year later, they had their first child, son David Wayton, who was born in 1938. Then in 1939, Robert Wayton decided to move back to England with his wife and, his, and their then infant David, giving his friendly subsequent goodbyes to all the Taiwanese people in Taiwan and his Taiwanese employers, who right kinds who very generously employed him to teach in the missionary boys school in Taiwan and then he left and sailed ostensibly to England but this is when the big moment happened their ship got diverted to Canada because of the outbreak of World War One when Hitler had marched into Poland and England had declared war that they got involved in the war with Britain and Britain was at war at last with Germany thus therefore the orchestrated onset of World War II so their ship got diverted to Canada and there was no way of them getting back to England so they stayed in Canada and then their other two children were born in Canada Peter born in 1940 and Dorothy born in 1941 so then they stayed in Canada and then they went to Denver, Colorado in America, living in America until 1946. But during that time, until 1946, Robert Wayton, because of his ability to speak Japanese and Taiwanese, he was employed, he was employed by a very special thing, an organization in America, but British involved, that could help decipher and ruin the morale of Japan in which he did successfully as Andy also in America when America began to help the British in the Second World War he began making engines to go into the fighter aeroplanes in which he did until the end of World War II and then at the end of World War II in 1946 when America then became our, our in England because I'm of English nationality when America became our strongest military ally at the end of World War II and has been ever since. It meant Robert Wayton could no longer stay in, Eng in America for very much longer. So in 1946 he went back to England reuniting with his family which he had not seen in well over 10 years for the first time in such a long time and also saw his in-laws for the first time in which he had not seen and got to meet them and was introduced and all that. And then when they came back to England, he took up a job in a city university in Greater London teaching marine engineering, which was what he did from 1946 
until his retirement in 1973. But after he and Agnes retired in 1973, they moved to Alton, to a bungalow in Alton in Hampshire. But very sadly, once they'd retired, his wife Agnes contract, contracted awful arthritis. But despite his wife's um, ordeal with serious arthritis, they did, it did not stop them from doing uh, voluntary work despite their retirement helping at youth groups and volunteering as marriage counsellors, in which they he only withdrew from the activities in the 1990s. But during the time before the 1990s, exciting arrivals came. The births of his grandchildren came around from the 1960s, mid to late 1960s and throughout the 1970s. But then some sad things happened during that time. When it got to the 1990s, obviously the loss of one of his siblings, and then the loss of his wife a few years later after that. Because his wife Agnes very sadly died in 1995 at the age of 96. After about 58 years of marriage she died, which affected Wayton greatly. Affected him so much that he was said when his wife died, he described his life, his life being stuck in just a lot of dark when there was no light around. As Wayton described, it was many, many years after his wife had died when he said this. He was like, you cannot be in this, bl black, this zone of black when there's no light around forever, but it can take time to overcome from something like this, as anyone could expect most indefinitely. And, um, and after that, he said, <sighs> after that, um, it was a very sad moment, obviously, when his wife died. So after his wife died, he moved into a warden facility. Well, it's not really a care home, but there are, it's blocks of flats where people can live independently but there are wardens on hand in case any of the residents um, need them. And they're always there for the, um, the elderly residents for when they need them, in case they need them. So he moved there after his wife Agnes died in 1995, living there for the rest of his life until his own death. Because he did live on quite a long time after his wife Agnes died. But... But despite the loss of his wife Agnes, within years after her death, some exciting moments came for Robert Wayton. In 1998, his first great-grandchild was born. His eldest great-grandchild was born on his 90th birthday, being the 29th of March 1998. And then sometime after that, more births of his grandchildren, great, no, not grandchildren, great-grandchildren came down the line. And then within five years later, Wait, Robert Waiton himself celebrated his special 95th birthday. And obviously during that time, despite the loss of his wife, and then the loss of his brother, um, Arthur, who died one year before his 95th birthday, but Arthur was almost 96 when he died. And, um, and Robert Wayton, during that time, it was almost like a new opening of opening lease of life for him, with um, having his great-grandchildren, and he even spent time, personally, with his great-grandchildren. Many of you may have been thinking, he must have been too frail and not... Um, mobile or active enough to spend time with his great-grandchildren at times. Well, you'd be fooled and proved wrong. He actually did spend time with his great-grandchildren when he was in his uh, mid and late 90s, believe this or not. And then sometime later, here comes a bit, this may blow some people's minds, or surprise some of you watching. On the 29th of March, two, 2008, after the 29th of March 2003, Wayton himself celebrated his very, very big 100th birthday on the 29th of March 2008, 
which back then, a hundred, back in the late 2000s, before the 2010s, was considered to be extremely old at that point. So he celebrated his 101st, his 100th birthday, and then within some time, and then every year after his 100th birthday, it was a special birthday for him every year after his 100th, and so on. Then Waiton celebrated his 105th birthday in 2013, 29th of March 2013, but by, two th by 2015, when he was then at the age of 107, Waiton began to be recognised. He began to receive a slight set of rec recognition because he was now being listed as one of Britain's oldest living men living past the age of 107. And then he found out about another man who was born on the, on the same day as he was, well, the same date of birth he has, but lives up in Scotland, and despite him living down in Alton, in Hampshire. That was Alf Smith, who was born on the 29th of March, 1908, like Robert Waiton himself. After finding out about him, he exchanged his um, happy belated 107th birthday card to Al Smith and they also kept in touch as pen pals but never met face to face. And um, then over time in 2016, shortly after the death of then Britain's oldest man, Jack Mansfield, Wait Robert Wayton became the oldest living man in England from the 27th of November 2016 and there he began receiving his recognition and in 20 on the 29th of March 2017 Robert Wayton himself celebrated his special 109th birthday before one year before his 110th, and was beginning to receive some recognition for it. And all that. And then, one year later, on the 29th of March 2018, Waiton, along with Alf Smith, despite not seeing each other that day, they celebrated their even bigger 110th birthdays making them both essentially super centenarians. And then, from that point, Robert Waiton was really gaining recognition because of his age. And so, which he subsequently celebrated and began to receive more attention and more recognition in the media. Then, one year later, on the 29th of March 2019, Robert Waiton himself, along with Al Smith, despite not being together at that point, celebrated their 111th birthdays. But then, very sadly, on the 4th of August 2019, Alf Smith sadly died, in which it upset Robert Waiton quite a bit. And, um... Then, following Alf Smith's death, Following his death, he really wrote his condolences to Alf Smith's daughter, with, with whom he lived with in the last three years of his life, living independently until he was 108. So he did that, and, um, <coughs> and then, not too long after that, a few more of the oldest living people in England died after Gwen Payne in October 2019 and then Hilda Clono on Christmas Eve 2019. So by Christmas Eve, Christmas Day of 2019, Robert Waiton became England's joint oldest living person with Joan Hockard, who was born on the same day as he was, the 29th of March 1908, and this time they were the oldest living people in the country. And then both Robert Wayton and Joan Hockard but then became the oldest living people in the country. 
But then, very sadly, within five months after Hilda Clollo passed away, Robert Waiton sadly died on the 28th of May 2020, aged 112, nearly two months after his 112th birthday, being his very final birthday. Then, and also, he became the oldest man in the world from the 23rd of February 2020, following the death of a Japanese man. And then, following Robert Waiton's death on the 28th of May 2020, Joan Hockard became the sole title holder of the oldest person in the country of England until her own death on the 24th of October 2020, very sadly. And then, and now, with Alf Smith having sadly died since the 4th of August 2019, and then Robert Waiton's death since the 28th of May 2020, and Joan Hockard's death since the 24th of October 2020, they leave behind quite a legacy behind them. Alf Smith was married himself, being married the same year as Robert Waiton, but then his wife died, Isabel was her name, two years older than he was. She very sadly died in 2003 at the ripe old age of 97. The, two, the couple had two children, but obviously his son died three years before he did. And also one of Robert Waiton's children died about five, six years before he did. And Alf Smith lived a good life as a farmer before retiring at the age of 70. He lived quite a good life, but it's not quite... Uh, there's not as much to describe to Alf Smith's life compared to Robert Waiton's life. And the same can certainly be said for Joan Hockard. A lot cannot be said for her life, but some things can, but not as many as what can be said for Robert Waiton's life, as he was really quite recogni more recognised compared to her, and slightly more recognised compared to Alf Smith as well, you know. But the 29th of March 2022 marked a special day in, legacy, in a lasting legacy from the late Robert Grant Pitts Waiton, 1908 to 2020, and Alf, Alf Smith, 1908 to 2019, and Joan Hockard, 1908 to 2020, all three of which born on the same day, the 29th of March, 1908, living past the age of 110, impressively, and leave behind a long-lasting legacy from individually from the three, from the pair of the trio people. Thanks all indeed for watching, everybody. I'm sorry if it's bored some of you, this video, but please let me know what your thoughts were in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I shall certainly look forward to hearing your views on this, and, and I certainly thank you very, very much for watching. Ta-ta, another time, from Foxy, and in loving memory of the late Robert Grant Pitts-Wayton, Alf Smith, and Joan Eileen Hockard.